Hi, I'm Anka Prado Trifan. Welcome to our AI 301 content creation and marketing. Now, in a world where standing out is essential, producing a type of content that is engaging and consistent can feel sometimes like a full-time job. But what if you had some AI tools that could streamline this process and then also maybe spark some creativity, especially on those long Tuesdays that feel like Thursdays. And you could have AI handle the heavy lifting for you when uh, your brain is no longer capable of coming up with any original thought. AI has been really changing how we create and how we can market content. And it really offers a lot of solutions that can save time and it can boost uh, a lot of the efficiency and productivity, delivering good enough results. Are those results exceptional? Probably not, but that's where the human expertise and human ingenuity <laughs> comes into play. And what I can do for you is maybe craft some really good copy or maybe create some compelling visuals or videos that can and be used to personalize that marketing campaign that you were sitting on or didn't have the budget for. And we can even analyze some of the engagement data that you were looking at, but didn't know what to do with it. And the right AI tools can really help you elevate your strategy and then free some of the time that hopefully then you can use not to do more manual work, but spend some time looking at the bigger picture. And with that, let's get into this session. So what can AI do for you if you're an event planner? Well, as I said, it can automate some of the content creation and that can be anything from social media to event descriptions, to maybe agenda, uh, reformatting and generation and abstract writing. Another thing that I think AI will be beneficial as we move into 2025 is hyper-personalized attendee experiences where you would have AI analyze attendee data and then create tailored recommendations and tailored journeys for uh, each attendee based on their preferences, including sessions, networking, and more where you get instant insights into the attendee engagement and it can then allow for some on the fly adjustments to maximize event success. Now, when we look at AI powered tools, there are obviously a lot of tools to do different things. As we mentioned in the first session, I was highlighting how different text to ask AI tools are better suited for certain applications. So then you have visual content creation, you have audio content generation, you have video production, all of those things could be enhanced by AI. And then when you're looking at how can an LM enhance my content creation, obviously it goes into the prompting, which we covered a little bit in a, the second session and some of the key information that you want to share in the type of prompting that you would format based on the framework that we mentioned, you'd be looking at the type of input that you'd give to ChatGPT based on that framework that you choose to use and then create a polished draft in seconds. And I use this quite a bit. And, and then review and refine a lot of the content that I generate, it comes from original talk, but it's not necessarily very cohesive or concise. So then I use AI to re-edit a lot of the thoughts or package it in a more cohesive manner. Okay. So a few of the tools that I want to get into this one session, because I just alluded to in uh, session one, obviously I won't have time to do a proper demo of any of those in more depth. But for example, a Spark It is an incredible useful tool for event planners in particular and event marketers that can generate uh, a lot of the things that normally you would do a lot of manual work for. So I was trying to source, for example, speakers, and I wanted to make it local to where I'm at because I would know who's available and who's here. And I ran this uh, by, by Sparkit, and it gave me a list of speakers. But then I asked you, okay, so where are you getting those speakers from? And then when I started investigating, AI was telling me that 
it doesn't really necessarily have a real time database of AI speakers and experts in my area. So then I went on and I ran the same prompt into some of the other LLMs. And one of the LLMs that I use for research is Perplexity. And then I got a way better list of speakers. And then he gave me a list of uh, uh, speakers that I could choose from, uh, including my face over here. Oh, great. To this, I would say, sure, you can get a lot of work done with Spark It, but probably you're going to have to pick and choose uh, what work is going to be accomplished via this tool versus another tool. And that's where knowing which tool works for what, it's important because you wouldn't have an expectation of Spark It to then source your speakers if he doesn't have access to uh, the most updated information, but maybe you can do a uh, content generation, build your agenda. And I ran quite a few of those queries here where you can enter your event type and then build this uh, agenda. And this is the free version, honestly. Uh, you can do a lot with the free version. If you wanna do the pro, you can upgrade and there's an option. But another thing that uh, you can do here is repurpose. And a lot of the content, especially for social media posts, um, I use, uh, this in conjunction with another tool called repurpose.io where um, a lot of the video content that I create on YouTube gets repurposed and posted on different channels. Okay, so there's obviously a lot to be done in Spark It. I hope that gives you enough to just wanna go and create your own sandbox and just play with it. What I wanted to touch on next is Copilot. Now, Copilot most likely is going to be within your Microsoft Cloud account, but Here's something cool that I feel like it's worth it when it comes to Copilot as a, a worthy competitor to ChatGPT. ChatGPT has been evolving a lot and it felt like Copilot hasn't necessarily and it was kind of trailing behind. But there's a lot of updates coming out of Microsoft and just this Thursday, Microsoft made Copilot Vision, which is an experience that you can use in conjunction with Copilot that can view and understand the context of what you're doing online to provide verbal real-time assistance. And that is av available in preview for pro subscribers through Copilot Labs. Uh, I haven't tested it out to be honest, but I, I was planning to, uh, this just came out last week, so uh, it's brand new. The new experience does live in Microsoft Edge. And since I'm on a Mac, I don't actually use Microsoft Edge, but I know that it is rolling out to a little bit the number of users. So I'll have to check to see if I even have access to it. The Copilot Pro subscription is $20 per month, sort of like ChatGPT. And if you are using the ChatGPT Pro subscription, I will highly recommend creating your own GPTs. And I have a few several ones here that I created. Some are private, some I've not. This one is actually Davis GPT and I use it whenever I want to create some content that has to do with wellness for events. Then I have my reproduction GPT that I do a lot of RFP comparison with this GPT, AV production RFPs. Anyway, there's a lot of opportunity here. The Claude chatbot is another amazing tool for creating content. And I use it a lot for blog uh, creation. And I would start with my original thoughts and then I would have it rewrite or emphasize on whatever the initial thought process was. Another tool that I want to touch on is Gamma. As I alluded to earlier, I have used it to create all of those slides and uh, there's more opportunity here. What I like about the pro version or plus is that it gives you the ability to brand it with colors and logos and whatever it is that you want to do. Notebook LLM. It's another great tool that, especially if you have long documents that you want to converse with, not only can you do so by just uploading the document, but you can even create a podcast <laughs> of that document. Not something that I wanted to do in this particular example, but if I just wanted to get some insights on this very, very long document, then it's just something that you can do. So. Like you just go into your document and say, I would like to know what this document is about. And by the way, even if you don't necessarily completely spell check properly, because AI is built on tokens, it wouldn't really care that you misspell document. And I wrote 
document instead of document. I know they would understand what I meant. It's actually a very long description of what the document is. But imagine if you had a contract that you wanted to really dial in and you wanted to understand, and that would be a, a great tool to use for that. Another tool that I love is Read AI, just because it gives me a lot of opportunity for growth in the way that I interact with my meetings. I also have this daily reminder of all the meetings that I've had and some of the things that have happened last week. And I have a daily read, which it tells me what were some of the meetings that I had last uh, last week. Another tool that's worth pursuing is infography, which creates some really fun infographs based on a lot of the templates that they have. You just pick your template. It even takes information from URLs, from different topics, based on what you want to create, content, PDF files. And if you have a lot of uh, content that you just want it to be regenerated in the form of a infographic, that's a great tool to use. Let's see what else I wanted to touch on, uh, because all of this plays into that. Oh, Mid Journey Editor. This is super fun. I, I just fell in love with this one. I want to make sure that I'm logged in. So the Mid Journey Editor, what's really cool about it is that you can upload your own images or you can edit from a URL. And I already had a few that I generated, so I'm not going to re, uh, regenerate this, but I started with this uh, one image and I wanted to create something different, a new imagination of this space, of what that space could be. And I got different versions of that prompt, but it was actually pretty cool to see that all I did was just use that original image and I prompted it to transform it into something else. And it came up with several versions and they were not bad. Some were better than other, <laughs> but there's so much that can be done with this. I really appreciate it the option to be able to take one image and then just completely regenerate it to be something else. And if you wanted to do some type of a brainstorming of a space with your client and all you have is the empty space, imagine how much fun you could have with this tool. And that's something that I plan to uh, use even more. A lot of things that can be done here. I wish I had more time to actually dive into this, but you could transform the space into something elegant or you can envision it to be uh, something that is not. Um, okay. I think this is it for this one session because we ran out of time. I would love for you to maybe play with some of those tools, especially if you haven't played with Suno and Udio, those are great music generators, uh, as well as Santesia that creates some beautiful video generated content, especially for B-roll, if you're into that kind of stuff. And there was one more thing that I actually want to touch on. Canva AI now has the ability to design images and brainstorm ideas within Canva, just with the prompt. And let's, let's take it for a spin here. I mean, it's interesting to see that they're going in that direction. This is in beta. So they're really trying to develop this tool into something that right now it's still struggling to be, but the opportunity is there for sure. It's almost like your AI chatbot within Canva, which is interesting. I mean, it could be useful, I suppose. Okay. Where are we? What else can you do with AI? You can use chatbots, virtual assistants. I use actually Herbie as my email assistant and Herbie is this great tool that it's like an assistant that you can email a specific task and it will come back with the results. And I've used Herbie in hiring processes and in roadmaps and in content generation and in procedures making. And all of this is via email. I would email Herbie what I want. Uh, Herbie would reply with what the brief was and it would go to work. And you would come back with the outcome and I would go back to it and say, well, I am happy with this, or I would like for you to work some more on this and back and forth in email 
interaction like you would have with an assistant. And it's been a great tool for sure. All right. How can you use AI to really help support your marketing efforts? And several ways you can do that is by data analysis of past events and market trends. So you can identify target audiences and optimal marketing channels, content generation, which is a lot to talk about. You can use any tool uh, that it was showcased, play with it and see which one you like best. Make sure that you prompt it properly and also make sure that you prime it with the type of personalization that really speaks to your tone and voice. And then obviously taking into consideration how much optimization any campaign it would require so that you continuously monitor it and make whatever real-time adjustments that are necessary. And then this is something that I don't necessarily have time to touch a lot on lead scoring, but there is a couple of workshops that I dive deeper into AI tools for lead scoring and pipeline and lead gen. So that being said, make sure that you come back for our last session on AI. And with that, See you next time.